there's something about when the body of Christ gets together that we have forgotten. And it is this. The Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. And in the Bible, there was a moment where one group didn't get it at all, his hometown. And then later in that same chapter, they got it. It says they were offended at him in the early part of Mark 6. And then it says they recognized him and ran, began to carry others to wherever they heard he was. It was like they looked at him and said, stay right here. I'm going to be back with my crippled child. I'm going to be back in a few moments with somebody that is in desperate need. The church used to believe that. We used to believe that Sunday morning was a gathering where we can proudly affirm to the world we are the only movement in the history of the world where the founder attends every meeting. So if he's here, let's say, look at me, if he's here, right, then all things are possible. Shout. Shout. The Bible says that they arrested Peter for preaching the gospel. And they said, you're no longer allowed to speak in this name. The irony of that is that a man who was a quadriplegic got up and walked in front of everybody. And it said that everybody knew him and everybody understood that this was a miracle. They even said themselves, what are we gonna do with these men? For in fact, an extraordinary miracle has taken place through them. It's public knowledge and clearly evident to all the residents of Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. So in the next verse they say, we gotta stop them. Does that not make your brain just start to hurt? You just said that this was an undeniable miracle. Undeniable. And yet, we're going to do everything we can to stop it. I'm going to talk to you about the modern version of that that's going on right now and how we are going to get our country back. Come on. I want you to be seated. Thank you very much. The Bible says that we're to pray for those who are in leadership, doesn't it? It's a very hard discipline, but every day I pray for my President Trump. I do. By the way, that was testing you to see if I was going to be okay with this group or not. And I see down here a t-shirt, revival driven. Yeah, all right. You've been in our tent. <laughs> Thank yeah, brother. Yep, we're gonna be back May the 15th. Yeah, we are. Well, I wish everybody was that excited. Yeah. Speaking of excited, one day I met a young woman and I said, God, that's my wife right there. I didn't waste any time. Some of you men need some lessons here on this stuff. Well, I don't know. I'm afraid of commitment. Listen, dude. Get off that soy right now. Be a man. Amen. Be a man. So I met her. I knew she was the one, and I couldn't wait. And we've been married, and it's hard to believe that this woman 
and I have a 32-year-old son, 33-year-old son. But I'd like you to greet my wife, Michelle. Would you stand right now? Yeah. How many of you want the truth today, do you? I uh, am a sweet person. I found that out when my wife said it in the kitchen one day. She walked up to me and looked at me and said, you are the sweetest man in the world. And when she walked away, I could hear her muttering and she spoke those things that were not as if they were. How many of you want the word today? Raise your hand. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I met your pastors in Batavia and James and Tracy came all the way up to a tent crusade where the rain never stopped. Doing a tent crusade in the rain makes as much sense as a screen door on a submarine. And uh, they saw the miracles, they saw the crowds. I was as shocked as they were. And because of Ron McIntosh, who is an instigator. I know you know Ron, but you don't realize he is an instigator. And because of him, this whole thing today is happening. And that's why I thank God for Ron He's been a friend of mine since the year 19, none of your business. <laughs> Let's get busy. We need miracles, signs, and wonders. Look at me right now. We need miracles, signs, and wonders. But, there's been a perceivable drop in the power level in the body of Christ. I had the honor of working with Miss Kuhlman. I had the honor of spending time because again, with Ron's help, of being with Oral Roberts, who I esteem to be the greatest man of God of the 20th century. I have been around those who operated in the supernatural and understood healing. And today, in that arena, the tail is wagging the dog. We are glorifying the features of emotion, but not the miracle that ought to induce the emotion. One day I saw this sign. I'm glad that I didn't say it. I was not the one who said this. But it said, the problem with women in America is they get excited over nothing, and then they marry him. Wow, am I glad I didn't say that. <laughs> but I believe the church gets excited over nothing. And I believe we've traded the sublime and the miraculous and the wonderful for almost the absurd. That is why this church is growing. Because I don't know if you realize that this church is breaking all the rules, all of the rules. Yeah, all of them. And they're breaking the rules because they're excited. And because every day there's a report of healing. I was in the green room and I was watching the testimonies of the people that are healed in this church every week. So that the miraculous is a regular part of this church. God healing the sick is a big deal in this church. Now let me ask you something. How many of you want more signs, wonders, and miracles? No, really, do you? I was led of the Lord to preach the gospel. I've been preaching the gospel over 50 years. And the Lord gave us one of the most astonishing revivals in the University of California at Berkeley, where the intellectuals, the atheists, were getting saved. The first core of our team in Berkeley were 17 Jewish atheists that came out of the Bolt School of Law, which was the law school at Berkeley. And they were converted and formed their own separate group because 
we knew they were radioactive and they were called the Lions of Judah. And these young people revolutionized. Then we had members of the Oakland Police Department, which is right next to Berkeley, and members of the Black Panther Party saved. Now that sounds great until you add the fact. These are two groups of people that were in a gun battle against each other, that stood on the stage and confessed Christ. And so for years, I won young people. That's what I do. Our crowds remain young. I don't do anything special for that. It's just God has graced us that young people want to hear me speak. And I don't get it. Some of you young people are saying, neither do we. But it is absolutely true. Now, years go by. All of the people I started with are talking about retiring. You know, they're getting ready to gum applesauce at Leisure World. And I'm not having it. I don't know what's wrong with me. My wife is waiting for me to slow down a little bit, but she is as adamant about winning souls as I am. So one day I went to bed, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, I asked the people at 9.30 the same question, what is up with God at 3 o'clock in the morning? How many of you has God awakened you at three in the morning? See? All my friends are retiring. The Lord says, study the youth culture. I was in the middle of the anti-war movement. I was, I was as a high school student preaching in the Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco. So now the Lord said once again, you start day one of school to study the American youth culture, specifically what is happening to them, who's doing it to them, why it is happening. It was the most painful research of my life. And at the end of it, I felt like God was torturing me by doing this research. And on the final night, I'm sitting in a hotel room reading a final article about the American youth when I feel evil walk into my hotel room. The temperature dropped, the evil was so pervasive, and I could hear this insidious voice in my spirit. I will humiliate them. I will destroy them. I will drive them out of their minds. I'm going to have them. I'm going to chew them up. I'm going to spit them out. And all of a sudden, the glory of God swallowed up the evil, and I heard God roar, but I will pour out my spirit on them. Yeah.